Hi guys, good morning. This is a nice way to do a, a play golf around a, <laughs> around a golf or a golf tournament or be able to chat to people. Here we are in lockdown. Uh, it's a bit tough. I feel it very difficult. Can't get my clubs out. I can get them out. I can have a bit of a chip, a bit of a putt. But uh, it's not good, guys. And, you know, I, I got to thank Aaron of uh, PXG uh, for his uh, vision on this, MST Golf. Uh, we're very lucky that we've got guys like this that can put these things together. I'm only here just to give you a little bit of a, a silly old farts uh, information what I've done over my years. But to everybody, you know, it's a, it's a tough one. And guys, we will be back. They sound we're open again on April 28th, but this month. But I don't know. I really don't know. I think we've got to be safe. Uh, we've got to listen to the, the experts, what they know, and let's just keep safe. But let's have good golfing. Let's have a bit of a fun chat on this sort of a line that we're doing here on the video side of it. I'm no expert. I'm sitting at my wife's desk. Got computer, got papers, got invoices. Don't know what I'm doing. If I haven't got a five iron in the hand, I'm lost. Okay, this is a good one. I was asked. Uh, fun players on tour to play with. Like, hard to define fun players. Because when you're playing golf and you're playing in a tournament, doesn't matter if it's 100,000, 5 million you really don't have much fun going on on the golf course when you're playing the actual you know, 18 holes. Uh, it's, it, it's tough. Everyone wants to win, everyone wants to compete, everyone wants to do the best they possibly can. So fun player is difficult, but I must tell you, the best player and the most fun player to play with, as a guy being funny on the golf course and who can chat, uh, make you feel comfortable, was Lee Trevino. For all you youngsters that don't know Lee Trevino, look him up, Google him. Lee Trevino, Mexican, okay? Best player I've ever played with. Um, he could shape the golf ball left to right, right to left. And he would tell you, even in a tournament, I played with him several times, several tournaments in Australia. And the one in Australia, I ran second to him. Uh, he would nominate every shot that he was going to play. A hook, a cut, over bunkers, four woods, five woods, whatever. He was the best, actually, and a funny guy. But a real competitor. Okay, a real competitor. The second funny one is a guy called Brian Jones. Jonesy, as we call him the donkey for nickname, because he's got big ears, um, he's just a real, a real character. He would be one of the funniest blokes I know uh, that can get on, on, on tour and do the tricks. For example, he would put rotten apples in guys' golf bags. He would tip their clubs upside down. Uh, he would put, change their head covers around on, on, on all, your, all your woods. The best one, was in Japan. He, uh, another player, pro golfer, Peter McWinnie, had a locker. We all had lockers there. But anyway, Jonesy one day decided um, each, each, each time we'd be lucky enough to get, well, not lucky enough, but we'd get different different things sent from different companies. Could be from Titleist, Footjoy, or whatever. Peter McWinnie's outside his locker had a, uh, two boxes of Footjoy, new shoes. Jonesy got one, one, one box, undid it, took the shoes out, uh, took the shoes out, hid the shoes, and put two dog turds in the box. Wrapped it all back up again, put it back in the locker, and left it. Well, the next morning, it was pandemonium. Peter was winning, was screaming in the locker room, Jones, where the hell are you, you ass? Where are you? Brian Jones, most funniest. Okay, guys, you've asked out about caddies. Wow. My only guy I really employ and I believe in and trust. Okay? All right, number one. Best, best fun I ever had is with, with, uh, with a caddy was my son, Stuart Jr. Loved him on the bag, and to have your son work for you, uh, be with you, absolute treat, okay, real treat. And the second one was uh, Christian Davidson, Chopper, as his, as his nickname was, because of his name, Christian Davidson, Chopper. He caddied for me at the, at the major. Uh, he was a real treat. He was one that looked after me, knew what I needed to, what needed to be done, never questioned me. Uh, and I believed in him. I thought he was fantastic, and uh, we would con confer great. So Christian was good. But the, probably the funniest one and the best one was a guy from Malaysia, actually, a CEO, ex-CEO uh, from Malaysia. Now, Mr. William Hong Lee. He's a he's a he's a club golfer. He's a member of RSGC. He's a member of I don't know all the clubs around the place, Australia, everywhere. So Willie caddied for me, and it was an absolute hoot. Uh, he used to on tour. He went to America. Uh, Europe, even wash my undies, you know that, wash my undies. And this guy was a guy that, he was a CEO, and Stuart Jin had one of the 
top CEOs in the world, 500 Fortune country, con Company on his bag. I couldn't believe it. But we had fun. We're still friends. Uh, I mentor him a little bit now, and he's a good player. To Willie, uh, to thank you. To Chopper, I thank you. And to my son, Stuart, thank you. Hi, guys and girls. I do like this next question. Are tournament pros shooting or able to shoot under par every time they play? Yeah, they're able. They wouldn't be tournament pros if they, if they couldn't. The big question is they don't. Okay? No one can shoot under par every single round. Tiger Woods, Rory McIlroy, I can keep on naming them all the boys. Jason Day, the, the, the list is endless. That's the problem with most players. Everybody thinks their ability is better than what they actually are. So you must take it in small increments, okay? But pros love to sh can shoot under par, no, no question, no question about that. Are they able? That's an easy question to ask. You wouldn't be on tour if you couldn't shoot 68 around your own golf course, okay? If you don't shoot 68 around your own golf course every time you play, don't turn pro. Well, this is a funny, this is a good question. How many times a, a, a week do I play golf? Well, I tell you what, wow, wow. I play when I can, possibly once to twice, if I can get time to do it. I love it, I still love it, but there's two modes we play when we have uh, golf to play. There's tournament mode and there's social, social mode, or teaching mode. So it's very hard when you've played for 40 over years like I have on tour and been a grinding experience out there every week. You have to make the cut first. You've got to think of your uh, rice bowl, you have to think of paying expenses, and you've got to think of the family expenses. It's a lot to think about. So when I play golf now, I like to play and enjoy and encourage other people. I think it's fun, uh, but I do it for a pleasure now, not a business. I might play for 10 bucks with my mates, that's it. But playing golf to me is, is just a game, okay? Always has been. I love practice, I love competing. But to me, it's just a game. And you golfers out there with handicaps, enjoy it. Okay, and remember, it's just a game. Oh, I've got a smile on my face with this next question. Okay, did I celebrate after winning the major in America, the tournament players? Did I celebrate? Yes, I did. And I went to my second home, the Hilton Hotel LAX. And to meet me on the steps when I got off the plane from Detroit with my caddy, just the two of us, we went up the steps, and who was there the first to meet us? Grant Coolley, GM. Okay, and the staff. All the staff. He was this guy was an absolute cracker. This was my second home away from home. So that night, or afternoon, I should say, when we arrived, all the all the clapping, all the cheering, the back slapping, fantastic. Grant did a wonderful job. Made us feel both happy. Uh, we went straight to the sportsman's bar. We sat down. We had drinks. I couldn't buy. I was the winner of that week, or that, or that day actually. I couldn't buy, and uh, I had to fly that night. Next night next night, back to, or that night, back to KL, Malaysia. So we had a few, yes, I must admit, I slept very soundly on the aircraft going back to KL. That was one of my fondest memories. This is a funny question. What do I cherish or which of my best win on tour playing 40 years? I've got a lot, but I guess the biggest win that I felt so proud about was when I was probably 12 years of age. I think I was 12 or 11. I won the Caddies Championship at Royal Melbourne Golf Club in Australia. Uh, I lived on just the back of the golf course. Dad's house was on the 12th of the East Course. To me, that was one of my starting points of playing golf. Absolutely loved it. I can still, hopefully, still remember a little bit of it. Okay, but the biggest one is probably what I said in America. Winning the ma a major on the senior tour um, gave me uh, a big pat on my back. I felt that, you know, when I do, to go, when I do finish this little uh, round or finish my life, I've got no regrets. I'm very happy in what I achieved. I wasn't a marquee player out there, but I did achieve things that I was so happy about and proud about. And I think it's something that all young guys have got to look at, okay? You practice hard, you work hard. As Gary Player always said, it's not about luck in this, this game, okay? It's harder you practice, the luckier you are. Okay, guys? Enjoy it. And remember, it's only a game, okay? See you on the course. PXG, thank you. Dying to hit them again, boys. Fantastic irons. Okay, and all the MST guys, cheers.